What's that? What is that? Do you see that? What the, the heck? So today I'm gonna get organized for this new semester. We're not even a full week into school starting and I'm flooded, flooded in readings. I kind of like the start of a new semester though because I always feel like it's like a little bit of a reset. And hey, it's the start of a new year too, so if you don't go to school, if you're not in university, you could do honestly whatever you want with the information I'm about to give you. You could even just watch this video and let it go in through one year and out the other, but if you want to grab a little drink, let's get organized. Oh, and just so you know, I'm honestly not one to sugarcoat academics with like the sheer aesthetic of it all and pretty notebooks and pretty stationery. Don't get me wrong, I love me some stationery. It's easy to be hard on yourself when you see people like saying here are my easy tips to getting organized but like everything they have is like perfectly brand new gel pens and a bullet journal that has never had an ugly page. I'd like to start a club for people who've started bullet journaling and realized like 10 pages in that it's just not for them. Every single time I would bullet journal, I'd just get even more stressed out because my page didn't look like it did on Pinterest. So all to say, getting organized is different for everyone and watch me get organized now <laughs> at least as much as I can something I'm making more of an effort to do <laughs> literally like one year into online school is getting ready in the morning before classes I I'm 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 not gonna give a tip to look runway ready for like online zoom classes right now I just have on some mascara and some lip gloss but honestly it does make you feel like you're putting in a bit more effort than like the absolute zero and I put on a nice outfit today my best tip for actually maintaining to put oh some sunlight let it shine honestly just don't kid yourself and wear something comfortable but change out of your PJs for me sometimes that's like a matching sweatsuit other times it's like an outfit like today where I've got on some pants and a turtleneck with a comfy little jacket just so you know if I was gonna go anywhere I'd wear these shoes it feels just as comfortable as PJs but it's not you know work with what you got this right here kids is the key to any at-home outfit next thing I'm gonna do to get organized let's actually go do it <laughs> Another way I get organized is by decluttering the space where I'm gonna work at. It's really easy for me to just kind of let things get a little bit messier. It's like one second the room is clean, then I take one thing out, I look to the left, I look to the right, and the room's an entire mess. And I don't, I'm working on it. But a good thing to do when you feel like resetting and like getting organized again is just making sure you have a clear working space. I used to always be really bad at like separating my working space from my relaxed space. So now I make like a conscious effort to sit at my desk and like not sit on my bed and do an assignment. Everybody's living arrangement is a little bit different. so. I'm lucky enough to have like a little corner of my room that has a desk. I know a lot of people have to work around family members. Even in my home, it's a little bit chaotic because both my mom and I work really close to each other. So at least as a bare minimum, having like a decluttered area. For some reason, I like take things out and then I just don't put them back. I don't know why. It's not even like this habit was there when I was a kid. I used to always put my toys away. I'm kind of making an effort to put away most of my cables that don't need to be out. Like it's not that strenuous to just take out the little box with the cables and take out the one you need. It's really straightforward. Forward, but for some reason my brain just can't figure out how to do it more frequently. It's okay. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? I almost spilled that. New segment, new angle, baby. Storytelling. Something that I'm pretty sure everybody does, or if you don't, you should get on that at the beginning of the semester, is saving all of the syllabuses. To this day, I don't know what the right word is. Is it syllabi? What is the plural of syllabus? Syllabi. Nobody says that. We'll stick to syllabuses. I'm just kidding. Don't water down your intelligence because you think it's funnier. Today's moral lesson of the day. The first thing I do when I start a new class is look at the syllabus because like, I want to see what the teacher is expecting from me. I need to see how many assignments I'm going to have. I need to see now that we're online if there's going to be like 50 million discussion questions. I also need to see if I have that teacher who only decides to do a midterm and a final. Who does a final for 55%? I just... Either or. That brings us to our next part of this organization video. Say it with me, kids. Agenda. <laughs> a human being shouldn't be this happy about an agenda. I'll tell you that much. A couple of videos back in my 2021 glow up glow up video. I basically said the same thing. I need a new agenda. I bought this agenda from Indigo. Probably the most fun part of a new semester is writing down due dates in your new agenda. Again, I don't know why agendas make me so damn happy. I really like the design on it. I like that there's like different sections per month. Also that it's like a fun aesthetic design, but the inside is plain because I like it's a simple agenda where like if I want to decorate it with my own things, I can. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just writing down what is due for when, for what class, just the major due dates. Then we're back here. So now we're at the point of buying books. Sue me, I actually read my textbooks because they're so freaking expensive. I cannot justify not reading them. If I made any mistake my first year of university, it was buying textbooks full price. Am I insane? I literally didn't know that there were such cheaper options. 
So my best tips for finding cheaper textbooks are honestly to just individually Google the name, Google like the name of the book with the author and then PDF. I would also recommend going on Facebook, the forbidden social media, and searching up like your school name and then textbook exchange because there's lots of open access Facebook groups where people sell their books for way cheaper. Just make a little post on one of those. I would recommend looking up like used textbook sites. One that I always use is abooks.com, so like abebooks.com. There's a ton of online thrift or like used bookstores you can go to. I know there's like a whole lot of heat on Amazon too, but for books, Amazon does have like a used tab where independent booksellers and like smaller bookstores can sell their books through Amazon. I think that's something like a lot of people overlook, like not trying to be that guy, because I can obviously recognize like the bad parts of Amazon, but just saying to boycott it completely, I feel like it's like ever so slightly ignorant, even if you mean well, because a lot of small companies do depend on Amazon nowadays to reach like a larger audience. It's so difficult for a small business to get traffic to like their individual website versus the millions and millions and millions of users that use Amazon, but this is a whole different story. Like I obviously get that the less people that use Amazon, the more traffic that could probably also go to those people, but I guess there's a whole side to it. I mean, I I'm not perfect, like, <laughs> I'm really not perfect. Sometimes I'm scared to like speak my mind on these things or to learn more about them because I'm afraid that I need to do it perfectly to speak on it. So the moral of the story to me at least is that people making an effort and that effort just has to be a fraction more of what they were making before is like good enough to me to feel like there's like some good in humanity. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> used books. There's a bunch of online bookshelf stores where you can get um, e-versions of the book. The website itself comes with its own like cool user experience. I use Vital Source for three books over this past year. And on Vital Source, for example, you can like highlight things in the book and you can make flashcards and it's like easier to study. Also quickly, very quickly, I will delete old files. I personally, unless it's a class that like absolutely changed my life, I don't really need to keep the notes. I usually delete the old syllabus, like all of the old documents, but I won't keep all of the PDF files. I won't keep all the lecture notes, you know? If there's something that really spoke to me, I'll keep it or like, I, I can't really think of any other reason I keep it. Hey there. make a schedule. I'm pretty sure no matter where you go to school, if you like enroll or even if you're in high school, like they give you a schedule. If, you, if that's good enough for you and you already have that, like that's fine. Low key. The one my school makes is kind of ugly. <laughs> so in this case it is for the sheer aesthetic of it all, but I like to make my own version of the calendar. There's some like absolutely free online calendar builders that have cooler templates for making your daily schedule. I'm a person who like it could be the last week of school and I still don't remember when my classes are. <laughs> So I, I, I look at that schedule a lot. So I just like having one that's like a little easier on the eye. It's not rocket science. All you do is put in the times of your classes and the teachers. Be surprised, it hasn't even been a week of school and I've been in my kitchen and realized that there's one minute till my next Zoom, so it happens. Also on the schedule pattern, something else I like to do is just briefly make a list of the readings that are gonna be due for the next like two or three weeks. I'll include like the page numbers in there just so I have an idea going into my first three weeks of school, what is gonna be due. and I don't need to kind of overstress myself out by looking at different documents all the time. I just have it as like a concrete list. I feel like that helps me start off my semester on a good foot, so that's just what I'm doing right now. Just so you don't think everybody's notes have to be perfect, this is how ugly this looks. <laughs> <laughs> Having like a list of what's gonna be due for the next couple of weeks is very, very helpful. Let us just say, I don't know why I'm still holding this. Last but not least, I'm gonna say something controversial. And don't get me wrong, I love me some stationery. Show me a cute sticker pack and I fall in love. <laughs> Put simply, I'm a simple woman. But it was just Christmas. Christmas is expansive. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty low on like pens and stuff right now, but like I'm still able to go through some things, find some good pens. How many pens do you need? And that's coming from someone who loves pens. I'm just being realistic. So my new stationery haul is basically just pens that I found laying around the house that are good pens and that work. Sometimes your old treasure can be your new treasure too. I just made eye contact with the sewing machine that I bought three weeks ago that I haven't opened yet. I rest my case. Oof, I'm back here. <laughs> No, I wasn't here the whole time. I came back here because the lighting was good. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it was fun getting organized with me. Um, it would be really awesome if you subscribed. I am really grateful. I'm almost at a thousand subscribers. This is crazy. I don't know. 
Thank you for watching and hopefully I will see you in another one of my videos. Bye. Michael.